Augmented Reality is a new application platform in which you can embed in real time 3D objects into a live video feed. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can create your own augmented reality applications. To get started, the first thing you'll need to download is PaperVision 3D found at code.google.com. Make sure you download version 2.0 of this because I haven't gotten version 3.0 to work yet. Um, the next thing you'll need is Adobe Flex which is found at adobe.com and when you download it you automatically get a 60 day free trial. But if you go to this website and you're a student or an unemployed professional you can uh, get a, a free uh, pro product key for it so that you can use it indefinitely. The next thing we're going to need is Tortoise SVN found at this website so go ahead and download that to your computer as well and you'll see what we'll use it for later and now if you go to this website which is an excellent resource as far as creating augmented reality tools and go to the marker file section they have a download for a marker generator so once you have those four files download, downloaded go ahead and start installing things this is Adobe Flex that I'm installing right now and when you're through with that go ahead and install Tortoise SVN and it's going to ask you to restart your computer so go ahead and do that and the next thing is the marker generator um, and when you start it up you'll see something like this and what you want to do is hold up uh, some type of black square so that you can save it as a pattern it can say anything that you want but it needs to be a black square so I just saved mine as marker.pat to my computer the last thing we downloaded is the paper vision file but before you extract that go ahead and create an action scripts folder anywhere you want I'm just gonna put mine in my document slash Adobe folder and just call it action scripts now go ahead and extract all the paper vision files and copy them over to the action scripts folder that you just created it should be a no chump and an org folder and then go back to the paper vision folder right click on it and select SVN checkout and then copy in this URL and click OK and this should download the FLAR toolkit folders to your computer. So when it's through, go inside FLAR toolkit, starter kit, org, and you should see a libspark folder. Now go into org within your action scripts folder and copy the libspark folder over. Then you can start up Adobe Flex and in the Flex Navigator, right click on it and select New Action Script Project. Give it a name and click Next and then click Add Folder and browse to the Action Scripts folder that you just created. And then click OK, OK, and then click finish at the bottom. Now you can start importing stuff into your project. The first thing we're going to import is in the FAR toolkit starter kit data and it's called camera underscore para. Go ahead and copy that to your project and also the marker.pat file that you created with the marker generator and also I'm importing an image. Now I'm just going to briefly describe the code. If you want a fully commented version of it you can find it at the URL below. But what I just wrote it sets up the SWF parameters 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second. And what I'm writing here embeds the marker.pat file into the project and gives it a class variable. Now I just copied that and pasted it and did the same thing for the camera para.dat file. Now I'm creating a new function called create flar and I'm going to create the variables for it up here. The first variable that we're going to use in it is for the flar parameters and the next one is for the marker. So now if we go into the function and declare these variables and set them up, we can attach the camera parameters to the parameter variable and we can attach the uh, marker file to the marker variable so we can use it in the project. Now the next function is called create cam. So um, we're going to go ahead and set that up. The variables for it that we're going to use are the video variable and the camera variable. So now we'll go back to the function and add these variables to it and we're going to make sure that the variables match the SWF settings that we wrote up at the top 640 by 480 at 30 frames a second. Now we're going to attach the camera to the video and attach the video to the project and if we test it out the, you should see your webcam working. So now the next function that we're going to write is the create BMP function which is for the uh, bitmap file. This doesn't actually create the bitmap file but it creates the bitmap data. So the variables that we're going to use are bitmap data, raster, and 
the detection variables. So now if we add that to the function and set it up, we can uh, set up the width and height and then attach the uh, bitmap to the video and attach the marker to the detection variable. And now, the, now we're going to create the paper vision function which is going to use a lot of different variables. There's going to be a scene 3D variable. Um, if you get asked this question, make sure you choose the uh, option that I just chose. So there's a camera 3D variable, a base node variable, a viewport 3D variable, a rendering variable, a, a matrix variable, and a cube variable which is going to be our cube object. So now we're going to add those to the function. Um, we're just going to create the scene 3D variable, set up the uh, 3D camera. The base node variable is kind of like a container box for everything, and then the render variable and the matrix variable. So now I'm creating a, a 3D light, and I'm setting the X, Y, and Z values for it. Um, for me, I'm just going to make them all 1,000 and then the Z a negative 1,000, but you can set them up to whatever you want. This just adds a, a shadow to your object. Uh, within the augmented reality file. So um, now we're going to create a bitmap material file which is where we're going to add our picture. So I'm going to paste my picture in here as the bitmap material and I set double sided to true. And now we're going to create a cube and just add the light and bitmap materials to the cube. Now I just added the viewport 3D and uh, we're going to add the uh, scene um, to the viewport 3D and then add that to the project. So now the last function that we're going to write is actually a loop uh, which tells the project what to do whenever uh, it shows the webcam. So the first thing we want it to do is add the uh, uh, bitmap file that we just created to the video and then I'm going to actually rotate the cube in the X and Y directions but you can do whatever you want there. Now I'm going to create a try clause and then an if statement and what this does is it uh, sets the detection values for detecting uh, the little uh, mat that we created and if it's out of the webcam it tells it not to show anything and things like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and try testing it out and it says that I have a couple of errors so let's see what those are. Okay, that should be a semicolon, and uh, that should be a capital C, and then that should be bitmap file material. So if you made that same mistake, make sure you change that as well. So now if I test it out and click allow, it should show the cube, which it does with my logo on it. And uh, you can change uh, the picture to anything you want just by changing that value. And now if you want to add a 3D image, like a Blender 3D image, you'll need a Blender file. So I've got a little Blender Acorn file, um, but you can use whatever Blender image you want. Go to File Export Collada 1.4, which will export it as a .dae file. Make sure you have all these options selected and click Export. And mine just exported to my desktop as a DAE file, and you can see it there. And I'm just going to import that and drag it over to my project. So now what we want to do is remove all the references to the cube and replace them with a DAE file. So uh, we're going to create a new variable called uh, D AR underscore DAE. And we're going to comment all this out. You can comment it out by go to source toggle comment and that should comment it out. And we're going to add a new material list variable um, which is just going to be a flat shading instead of an image. You might could use an image but I haven't tested it out yet. And then we're going to create a new DAE and uh, load the uh, acorn file, my acorn file uh, to the DAE. And I just scaled mine up a little bit because it was initially a little bit small but you can do what you want there. And then change the add child AR underscore cube to DAE. Now in the loop I'm just removing the references to the cube and I'm actually going to rotate my DAE file. So now if we test this out and click allow you should see a rotating acorn uh, which you do here. And it's not perfect, but you can mess around with it. This is just kind of uh, to test it out.
Now if you want to embed this into your uh, website, and if you go up to the top of the screen you can remove the HTML reference and it should take you to the folder that everything's located in. And you want to copy all this to your server, upload it to your server, and then just type in the uh, HTML website and you should see it. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more go to tinkernut.com.